What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and after showing you more than 110 new features in my previous video, here are 25 kind of less obvious additional features and changes found in iOS 16 beta one. And if you want to continue seeing more iOS 16 videos, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. All right, so first up is a more detailed permissions menu from the control center. So when you swipe down on the control center up top, it shows what has used our location, our mic and our camera recently. Now that's not new, but when you tap on that, you could see this is a brand new interface in iOS 16. So it shows the application and then it shows what it has used right beside it. So Instagram has recently used my camera, whereas my camera app has recently used my camera, microphone, and location. But this whole interface here is much better. It gives you much more information and makes it easier to read. In Safari, we have a brand new video player. As you can see right here, we have a new interface for that video player, but you could also now swipe left or right to seek forwards or backwards 10 seconds. So for example, if I swipe from right to left, it goes back 10 seconds. If I swipe from left to right, it goes forward. 10 seconds every time I do it. It makes it very easy to use gestures to go forwards and backwards with the default video player. We could also do more in the weather application now. So if you go into your weather here, you could see all of your temperatures, but if you tap on one, you could actually see a graph now. So this is just further implementation of the dark sky weather application, which Apple acquired. You could see a graph here of the exact temperatures at the exact time. Like it's like a stock chart. It's pretty awesome. And you could even change this as well. If you go ahead and tap right here on the temperature, you could do it for wind, for rainfall, for humidity, for anything. So if I go to wind, you could see a very similar chart right there. And you could change this by the day as well. You have a little calendar up here. You can see what it's gonna be like in the future or in the past. And it's just a really cool new interface to give you a lot of data and a lot of information on weather. And the messages application, of course, we now have a new voice message button down here in the app drawer. And you just have to tap on the little microphone to start recording a message and you tap it again to end it. You don't have to hold that any longer. And when you get done and once you send that voice message, when you press play on something that you sent or you received, you're now able to scrub through that audio after you press play. So you can you know, go back or forwards on a voice memo without having to play the full thing over. Also, I already showed you guys how to mark a message as unread by haptic pressing on the message and then marking it as unread, but there's an even easier way. If you swipe to the right, there's now a new little option there and if you tap on that, it will mark that message thread as unread. So you can do it from one of two ways. In the contacts application, you can now choose which fields from a contact you want to share. So for instance, if I go down here to share this contact, you could see we now have filter fields. And if you tap on that, you could choose what you may not want to share. So if you don't want to share their address or, you know, their email or website, but you only want to send their first name and their phone number to somebody who needs their number, you can do that and then select done. And then you can send that to somebody and it will exclude whatever you deselected there. We have a couple of changes in the podcast application. So you guys know about the interface change. I talked about the interface change here where the scrubber is below the title and the name of the show, along with the date up top there. That's all new. Also though, we now have a change for how fast the podcast goes, like the speed of the podcast. Before, you used to have to type through it. You had to go, you know, tap through to get to 1x or 2x or whatever you want. But now it's just a simple pop-up menu. You just tap on that and you could select the speed that you want the show to go at. It's much easier to switch back and forth because I find myself going from 1x to 1.5 to 2. I kind of switch between them a lot depending on the show. So that's nice to have. Also, down in the bottom right-hand corner, you can now see we have our sleep alarm right here. So if you tap on that, it gives you the menu where you can turn off the podcast at a set time, whereas before you had to scroll down a little bit and then you got to sleep timer right here. So it's much more accessible now. Also, you'll notice that the when current episode ends is at the bottom, whereas it used to be up at the top. So the whole menu has kind of changed in terms of the order as well, but it's not that ugly button anymore. It's just right there right down below. And then also the three dots are right here now, whereas before they were down there and at that bottom right hand corner and it pulled up this ugly menu, whereas now it's a much easier to read menu. We have another minor change in the music application. So I showed you guys a bunch of changes in music already, but if you go into the queue right here, you will notice that now the scrubber is gone. So we now have more room to show all of our queue, all of our songs in the queue, instead of showing our little scrubber 
right here like it showed on iOS 15. Also, I have to mention that I am loving the playlist sorting option. So if you go to these three dots there, you can sort by and you can do it by the playlist order, the title, the artist, the album, or my favorite, the release date. So now you can have all your new songs at the top of that playlist. We have a slightly different animation and UI when asking Siri what song is playing. So here we go. What song is playing? So you can see that Shazam little animation up top there is new. In the photos application, you can now search for text. So if you go to search right here and you search search for something like we'll just say Tesla for example if we go to one of these you could see it highlights where that photo says Tesla so it kind of scans through everything and can tell when that pops up because so you can see right here it shows text found in photos 150 different photos that was found in and speaking of live text now double tapping does not invoke live text and select that text so before in iOS 15 if you just double press right here it would select the text but now that's not how it works you kind of have to hold and then that's how you select it and I personally like this so much better because I cannot tell you how many times I accidentally selected text when I was just trying to double tap to zoom in on that image so I like this little change now let's say I wanted to edit this photo here let's say I wanted to add like some filters let's say I wanted to add a vivid warm make it maybe at 86 we'll tap on done now if we go to these three dots up there and we go to copy edits you can now copy and paste edits between photos so if I go over to this one right here and go to these three dots and then go to paste edits you can see it will paste those edits onto that photo very easily. Now, if you've ever taken a great photo and tried to apply it as a wallpaper on your phone, you would know that it just doesn't work out because the aspect ratio is off and it just doesn't look very good. Well, iOS 16 fixes that. So if you go into your edit section right here and then go down to crop, and then if you go up to the little aspect ratio squares up in the top right hand corner, you now have a new one for wallpaper. So that is new in iOS 16 and that will allow you to set a photo, the right aspect ratio to fit as a wallpaper on your display on your iPhone. And now you can move it around to have your subject right in frame right there so you can center it and you don't need Photoshop for this now. So if you tap on done, there you go, boom, it's saved as a perfectly sized wallpaper for your phone. If you go into your photo library or into a photo album and you tap on the three dots up in the top right hand corner, you could see that where it used to say just aspect and now says aspect ratio grid. And when you tap on it, it changes to square photo grid, whereas it used to just say square. And then also in those three dots, you have filter right here and under filter you can also now exclude shared with you photos so if you don't want photos that were shared with you to show up in your photo library you can now disable that if you would like to in the health application if you go to your sleep section you can see the sleep tracking is much more advanced now in iOS 16 so in iOS 15 you didn't really get much it just showed this information right there and it showed your graph and that was kind of it and now in iOS 16 you can see it shows a lot more information so it shows all of this like it did in iOS 15 but we also have stages now where it shows the amount of time that you are awake the amount of time you are in REM sleep core sleep and deep sleep it also shows your percentages right here as well so your average awake percentage your average REM percentage shows all of that information right there if you have that you know able to be tracked you also have comparisons right here where you can compare your heart rate and your respiratory rate and it shows it on this graph right here so I will have to wear my Apple watch to sleep and kind of test this out more but you get a lot more sleep data now with iOS 16. there's also a new New sleep widget so before we only had this one right here where it showed our data and schedule but now we have a new one in iOS 16 for sleep so it says view your most recent sleep session including sleep stages and when you add that you could see that is what it looks like right there and if I had different stages in my sleep it would show up oh and also in the health application we now have vision prescriptions so if you have you know a prescription for contacts or glasses you will love this new addition to the health application that is now included in iOS 16. If we head into our settings and go to accessibility and then down to Siri and then all the way down to the bottom we have a new toggle there for announce notifications on speaker. So you can now have it set to have Siri announce your notifications over your device's speaker. And when you turn that on you could also set announce notifications right here as well we also have a lot of changes to family sharing so you can see it now shows our family members at the very top of the main settings page and when you tap on that you can see this interface is completely different so here's what it's like on ios 15 on the left ios 16 over here on the right so before when we went to add a member it was just right down there now to add a member or create a child account it's up in the top right hand corner we do also have our family checklist which is nice so you can basically you know take advantage of all the family sharing features available to you and make sure everything is updated and correct 
We also have our subscriptions, purchase sharing, and location all right there. So you can see just all different glyph icons. The layout is much easier to understand and basically just set up. And then if I turn on screen time for that family member, you can see we have a brand new splash screen right here. And when we go into this, you can see it shows us the content blockers first instead of the downtime. We have this little slider right here along with the apps and basically what's going to be restricted. And you can see that came up second here on iOS 15. Actually, that's app limits. That's even different. So you can see everything, the order of everything has changed. And so here's content and privacy on iOS 15, and you don't really get many options. Whereas in iOS 16, you just get more options to be able to, you know, restrict access. But you can see it does crash every time on iOS 16 when you go to, you know, set that up, which is a bug in beta one. And then while we're in this section, if we go to the iCloud section right here, and then to iCloud backup, you will see that now it shows all of your device backups right here. So you can see the size of them and you can delete it just that easily. So before you had to go into multiple sub menus, I believe you had to go into iCloud and then manage storage and then iCloud backups. So now it's just much easier to access and kind of see all of your device backups so you can delete them and free up some storage in your iCloud. Also, if you have a Face ID device, you will now get an alert saying that your face is too far away. And that's the reason that your phone is not unlocking. So that is new. I'm going to try to emulate that real quick. There we go. My face was too far away. And it now tells me that the reason it can't unlock is because my face is too far away. The shortcuts UI is also a little bit different here in iOS 16. So if I go into my search right here, and if I search for one of my shortcuts here, you can now run the shortcut, of course, from spotlight search you could do that before but now you get a new ui so a slightly changed ui right here looks a little bit cleaner and more modern than it did in ios 15. and then finally in the home application you can see that now when you have an update available for one of your home pods or one of your devices it now shows the update in this big bubble whereas before it just showed it in this little tiny circle right there under my home so much easier to access and also much easier to see the details and get to that update screen. So there you have it. Those are about 25 additional features and changes found in iOS 16 beta one so far. Again, I will have a lot more videos coming on iOS 16 covering more features and changes, especially the more hidden ones. I'm saving those for another video coming in the future. But if you guys enjoyed this one, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And again, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 16 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.